Hi everyone, welcome to Admin of Code 2022, Day 5, Supply Stacks. In this video, you'll see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles, and then I'll be explaining my solutions, including code and thought process. As always, if you want to check out my code, that's going to be linked to in the description in a GitHub repository. And also, I have a private leaderboard that you can join. I'll include the code to joining this in the description, so be sure to check that out. Okay, on with the video. So I took a whopping 16 minutes to solve both parts of today's puzzle. And I think most of that was due to input parsing. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more on how I parsed the input for today, as well as how I might have improved on that. But I'll still explain everything um, in my solution. So day five, supply stacks. Here's the gist of the puzzle. We are going to begin our expedition once our final supplies have been loaded off by the cranes on the ship. Our supplies are contained in a number of crates, and each crate is labeled with a letter from A to Z, uppercase. We're given a set of instructions here which tell us how to manipulate the crates. So the crates are stored in this sort of stack pattern where there's a number of stacks. In the example, there are three stacks. You can see the first stack has crates um, N and Z, second stack has D, C, and M, and third stack has P. We're given a number of instructions, and the instructions tell us how to move around the, uh, the crates. So for example, this first line, move one from two to one, tells us to move one crate from stack two to stack one. Um, so after that, it'll look like this. If we're going to move multiple crates, then we're going to move them one at a time. So in this example, if we're going to move two crates from stack one to stack three, or rather three crates from stack one to stack three, then we're going to put D first and then N and then Z. So the, the order is going to get reversed every time we move the crates. So the final question is, um, what order will the crates be in once we follow all of the instructions? So the tricky thing about this puzzle, as I said, is the puzzle input. So let's take a look at it. Um, it's organized like this. So the initial ordering of the stacks is presented as a drawing, not as like just lines listing um, the letters in each uh, stack, but rather in this sort of graphical ASCII art style, um, which makes things a lot harder to do programmatically because if you're wanting to read general input in this format, it's a little bit more complicated than just reading um, the order of the letters straight from lines. So when I saw this input format, I definitely panicked a little bit and debated between reading it automatically versus um, inputting the data manually into a format that I could more easily read um, automatically. So what I decided to do was write a program to actually read the input and make it general so it'll work on anyone's input. I think that slowed me down a little bit, but I'll explain all these parts nonetheless. So here's what I did. Um, we can only read line by line. We can't exactly read by columns. If we could read by columns, that would be a lot easier, but um, we can only read by lines. So what I did was here in Python, I'm going to open up the file. And then first, we're going to split it between the drawing and the rest of the instructions. And to do that, we're going to identify where the double black slash and character is. That is where the double new line is. That's this empty line over here. We're going to identify where that is um, and then just split it so that we have a string containing this and then a string containing this. Once we have those two parts, um, they're going to be inside a list with two elements. And this first string here, um, that first element of the list, is going to contain a variable called drawing, which contains this whole string. We're then going to split that by new lines to get a list containing just these lines. And then um, over here, I just set up a variable that contains all of our stacks. Initially, there are nine of them. That's a hard-coded variable. This is not going to work generally. Um, but we have a list here containing sublists, which represent every stack. And then we just go through all of these lines. So horizontally, we scan. Um, and then over here, <clears throat> we create a new string called crates, which starts from index one in the string and takes every fourth character. Now, every fourth character is important because, for example, if you see, look at this line, um, the crates letters are separated by four characters. There's one, two, three, four, um, and then the next one appears. So we're going to take every fourth character starting from index one, and that's going to give us a string containing all of the crates on that line. So there are nine stacks here, so all we have to do is loop from one to nine, or rather zero to eight since we're zero indexing, and then add that crates <clears throat> onto whatever stack it is. So we're going to loop from one to nine, um, look at whatever crates is inside that position, and then add it to that stack. Um, we do have to be careful, though, because what I want is for the bottom of these stacks to be index 0, because if we're working with stacks, which is a data structure, we're going to be 
doing operations at the top, and that's exactly what we're doing with these crates. The crane is moving from the top. So we want to make the bottom index zero, which is why I reversed the order of these stacks. So that was really the difficult part of the input reading over. Um, I had a few bugs here, which definitely slimmed me down. So inputting this stuff manually would have probably been easier or rather quicker. But anyways, we now have a list containing sublists that contain um, all of these stacks. Um, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to print that out right here, um, just so you can see what this variable stacks actually contains. Um, I'm going to scroll up through the inputs. That is not very pleasant. Okay, so I cleaned things up a bit, um, used the pprint library to pretty print um, the stacks. So this is what the variable looks like. It's a list of lists, and every element inside the big list contains a smaller list, which is the stack of the crates. Anyway, so that's what this variable contains now. All we have to do is loop through it, I'll loop through all the instructions, and then apply those operations. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all of the instructions, which is the, remember, second element in the list that contains the drawing and the instructions. We're going to take that second element, and then we're going to split it by new lines to get a list of all our instructions as strings. I then panicked for a little bit deciding how to parse these lines. I thought about using regular expressions to sort of match this format and then extract the three numbers we need. But it turns out that all we need is to split it by spaces because then we can just get all the tokens and it'll be easy to parse. So I split it up by spaces and now we have a list containing six strings, move n from source to and destination. Um, then taking indices one, three, and five, gives us the numbers we want, but they're still strings, oh no. So we need to convert them to integers, and I did that using the map and int function. Since these numbers are one indexed, I then subtracted one from source and destination to get the correct stack. And then all we have to do is follow instructions. So we have this variable representing the number of crates we need to move, and then we also have our source and our destination. So we just look at our source, we're going to do this operation n times. We're going to take off the top crate from that source, this is that pop um, function, that's going to remove the last element of a Python list, and then we're going to add that element onto the destination with the append method. So we do this n times. Um, we move a crate from the source st stack to the destination stack one by one. This will reverse the order, um, but that's required. After that, to get the tops of the stacks, all I did was loop through each of the stacks and then just grab the last element. We can do that using um, this negative one index in Python, Python is really cool. So we just go through each of the stacks because um, index zero is at the bottom and negative one is at the top. We just grab each of the negative ones, use list comprehension to put it into a list, and then we can join it together to get our desired answer. Okay, so that was part one. It wasn't a particularly tricky puzzle. All we had to do is know how to use data structures like stacks. You could also do this different ways. You could do this with strings even, um, but I decided to use lists because they were what I was most familiar with. So let's look at part two. Um, for part two, only one thing changes, which is that instead of reversing the order when transferring crates, um, this crane mover 9001, which is the newest model, not the crane mover 9000 that we expected, um, it moves all of the crates immediately, not one at a time. So the order stays the same. So for example, if we wanna move, let's say, um, two crates from stack two to stack one, they retain their order. So they're originally C on top and M on the bottom. Moving two of those crates um, keeps the order same C and M on stack one. So for part two, what I did was use more fancy Python techniques. Um, we only have to do one operation. We don't have to loop this time. In fact, we didn't have to loop for part one either, but um, I, just, I, I just decided to loop because that's a bit easier to understand for me. All we have to do for part two, same input code, same everything. The setup is the same. We go through every instruction, we look at how many crates we have to move, we look at the source and then the destination. We first look at the last n crates on the source stack. To do that in Python, all you have to do is index negative n to the end. And we do that using negative n colon. So negative n references the last nth, the nth last element in an array. So for example, negative one, like we did at part one, is the last first element in an array or list, and negative n um, just takes the last nth element. Um, now, iterating from negative n to the n just gives those those top n elements in that stack. We can extend this to the destination stack, because this slice here returns a list, and we're just appending that to the end of destination um, element-wise. Um, and then, of course, we have to actually remove those stacks from the source stack. We can't just copy them over like a cloning machine. So we have to take our original stack and then shorten it so shorten our, short, our source stack um, just to the first few elements, um, getting rid of the last n. 
Notice how the colon here isn't in front of the negative n, so we've shortened it by n many crates. So yeah, all that differed from part two to part one was that we transferred the crates all one at a time, so as a block now. And at the end, we can do the same reading, um, we use list comprehension to grab that top crate from all stacks and turn it into a string. Um, so that's it for day five of admin code 2022, supply stacks. Tomorrow, I think we're going to set off on the expedition and some more exciting things are going to come. So some after explanation rambling, it turns out people actually solve today's puzzles really fast. So the 100th person solved both parts in seven minutes and 58 seconds, which is almost, which is more than twice as fast than I did it. Um, so very impressive. And the fastest person managed to get it in three minutes and 14 seconds. So, you know, you, you live and you learn. Um, doing these puzzles is giving me more experience so that I can become more competitive. But, you know, the goal, the goal is to have fun. So don't necessarily need to feel pressure. But I now know that sometimes inputting stuff manually um, is going to be a lot faster. And reading input, you know, doesn't have to be that complicated of a process. Um, anyways, that's, that's it for day five. I hope you enjoyed my explanations. If you have any feedback, questions, comments, feel free to leave them down below. And that's it. I'll see you tomorrow for day six. Thanks for watching.